Well, bless the Lord. I hope you've come together tonight to help run a race for our Lord Jesus Christ. Today's discipleship empowerment tip is the word race. And we've titled this message, The Race of Life. I don't know if you understand, but every moment of every day that you're awake and moving around, you're involved in a race. A race that is can be a long-term race or just a very short little sprint, but it is a race that you're involved in. So today we're going to talk about the race of life. And often that race of life, for many people when you're in a race, it's like a competition. But here it's not so much a competition. It's the idea where it's the longevity of it, where we're to realize that we're in a race and it's over a period of time. Some have a long race, like a marathon, and some have a short race, but we are in a race. And that race has a starting point and a finishing point, and we need to realize that. Now, we can use the word race in two different ways, and tonight we're going to use it in the idea of running a race, even though we can also use it when we can talk about a race of people, a people group who may be under a certain culture or tradition or a language, it can also be used that way. So there is two ways of using this word, and the Bible does use it uh, at least one way in Genesis 6-5, talking about a race of people. In the, this particular case, it used the idea of a race where they were wicked, a wicked group of people. Then and when you're over in Revelation, it gives the idea of a race, but it doesn't use the word race in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 where it talks about every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. Well, again, those four words are like a definition of the word race. But that's not what we're going to focus on tonight. We're going to look at the idea of running a race that we're all in. And today, we're in a race of life. And we need to pace ourselves and understand the particulars when it comes to what a race is all about. And so... When we start off by looking in Scripture, we again go over to David. He's going to give a little bit of a testimony concerning this idea of race. And in, in Psalms chapter 19, it alludes a little bit to this idea of race, but it's under the whole section, section of the revelation of the Lord. David is trying to give a, a bigger picture of who the Lord God is both in song and also in teaching. And so it talks about him how magnificent our Lord is. And even in the heavens, even the heavens with all the stars and all the sun cannot yet comprehend how magnificent our God is. And he goes on in verse 5 and he talks about, which is like a bridegroom. Of course, we know Jesus Christ is the bridegroom coming out of his chamber. And rejoices like a strong man to run its race. You know, he's just saying here that our God is a wonderful God. And he is so excited about each one of us individually. That when he is like a person who comes out of the, the bridegroom's chamber. He's getting ready to get married. And he's excited to meet his bride. And because of that, he feels the strength and the vigor of going and meeting his bride. And it's like running a race to get to her and be with her for the rest of his life. Well, the beauty of that is, is that our God is in that race with us. And that soon he's going to gather us together as his bride. And as a bridegroom, he is excited he is the strong man, and he is to run the race to get to us, to gather us up, and to bring us into his very presence. So this is just a little bit of a picture how David sees and shows the revelation of our Lord as he speaks to it in verses 1 all the way through to verse 14. And then we go over to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is always a complicated little book because it's, it's talking mainly, the definition of you probably could put for all of the Ecclesiastes is to deal with this whole idea of time. 
how we're given specific time and how God has given us time here on earth. Some, as he said, is long, some is short. Some have, have a very healthy time, some have very weary and sometimes even afflicted times. But there is a time that we are all here, that we spend here on earth. And Ecclesiastes kind of talks about that. And as he talks about that in chapter 9, we're going to read from verses 10 and 11, actually through to 12, where he adds in again a little idea that during this time, this time is like a race. The time that you've been given is like a race. And again, it depends on how you're going to run that race will determine how far you get and whether you get to the goal that God has for you. Verse 10 says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it. Do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge of wisdom in the grave where you are going. So it's kind of a negative type of thing. He's saying, you know, once you get to the grave, it's all over. But before the grave, you need to get doing it. And part of the get doing it is to realize that we're in a race. Because he goes on and says, verse 11, I return and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chances happen to them all. So what he's saying that there's certain kinds of things that are going to happen to us all, and it's not going to be easy, and it's, and it's going to be a challenge, but within that time, God's hand is still with us, and during that time, we are running a race. And I think so often our race is more like a marathon. Those of us who have been around for a long time are in a race, and, and it's always a challenge because you get up in the morning, and there seems like, some for some of us, the race is like running up a hill, that there is all kinds of things to do. Some of us, it's like running down a hill. Some of it is us just running across the plateau, where it's just a regular step-by-step, moment-by-moment. But we are in a race, and we need to realize that. And we shouldn't give up when we're in that race. Paul talks about it over in 1 Corinthians. He again brings up this idea, because he saw in his own life that he was in a race that his life was a journey and it was a race. In 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24, it says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? Now there's a profound thought. If you're in a race, then we all should be running. So the choice is, is here. Are you in a race or not in a race? Are you in the race of life or are you just trying to be a bystander watching everybody else run and everybody else getting involved. When it comes to being a disciple of Jesus Christ, we're all to be in the race. That doesn't mean that we all run the same speed, or we all have the same distance. But we are all in a race, and that's what Paul is saying. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? But one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. You know, he's talking, I mean, in he knows about the, the sports and things that went on in Rome and the things that people that were active and the marathon has been active in Rome for thousands of years. And he knew about how people ran and how people were in a race. And he said, isn't it interesting? They just run for a wreath. That's what it was. They didn't have trophies and all those kinds of things back then. They just ran for a wreath for that few moments to have the glory to put the wreath on their head and to say, I beat everybody else. But Paul is saying, it is not so with us. We are all in a race and we're all running and we need to continue to run. Why? Because when we finish the the race, that we're running not for a, a perishable crown where it's going to die and fall apart. We're running for an imperishable crown. That we will stand before the Lord and he will say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's what we're racing for. That's what we need to keep focusing on. 
Therefore, he says, I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight as as one who beats the air. Paul says, I run this race with clarity. I know where the starting point was, and I know where the finishing point is. And the finishing point is the kingdom of heaven with our Lord Jesus Christ, gathering it together with him. That's where we need to be focused. That's where we need to keep our eyes on. Not on the wreath itself, but on meeting and going right into the very presence of Jesus Christ himself. Paul then tells Timothy, he says, Timothy, now again, we've talked about night after night after night that Timothy is a leadership book, just like Titus, where Paul is writing to these young leaders and trying to tell them things that are important in their leadership responsibilities. And he brings up this idea of race again with Timothy in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 7. And we'll go back up actually to verse uh, 6 and read from 6 to 8. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And the word day is capitalized. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearance. So he's saying to Timothy, Timothy, I'm getting older. I've run the race. I've, 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 I've run the race in such a well. I've been blessed and God has helped me. I've gone through the valleys and the hilltops. I've gone through whippings and beatings and shipwrecks and all kinds of things. I've run the race. And he's telling young Timothy now, Timothy, you're also in the same kind of race. It's going to be a challenge. It's not going to be easy, but don't lose focus. Just like he had run in the race. He said, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And what Paul tells Timothy, but what he was focusing on wasn't a crown so much as a gold crown, but what he was focusing on was the crown of righteousness. You know, God wants to crown us and clothe us in his righteousness. Because of that, because of what he puts on us, we can walk into the Holy of Holies. We can walk into heaven. We don't have to stand at the gates of heaven and wonder if we're going to get in or not. We can go up to the gates of heaven. Why? Because we have run a good race and that we have run that race in Jesus Christ and he has covered us with righteousness, his righteousness because of his precious blood. And because of that, what is waiting for us is also not only a breastplate of righteousness, but a crown of righteousness. Oh, what a wonderful day that will be to wear a kingly crown. But this kingly crown will be a crown of righteousness that the Lord is going to give to us. Why? Because we have finished the race. We didn't lose heart. We didn't give up along the way. We didn't turn our backs. We didn't go back to false idols and gods. But we kept running. And he wanted Timothy to keep running. Timothy, keep looking forward. Keep finishing the race. Because as you finish it, there will be a crown of righteousness for you too. There's one for us. There's one for all you people that are watching tonight. There's a crown of race, but don't grow weary and while doing. Keep running. Keep running. You don't have to run to wear yourself out. You know, I know sometimes people got the idea that, oh, they want to die with their boots on. Well, that's a good thought, I suppose. But what we're supposed to do is to run and walk in such a way that we bring honor and glory to our Lord. And that at the end, we will be received the crown of righteousness. One other verse, and there isn't many verses tonight that deal with the idea of, of the running and race, but one of them you probably all know is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Therefore, and therefore is always to sum up what he has said in the previous chapter, Therefore we also, since we have suffered, or such we have surrounded by a, such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, 
and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. The author of Hebrews says you're in a race. He's trying to tell us you're in a race. And, and to really run well in this race, you need to let go of some things. Let go of everything that is weighing you down. You know what I mean? I mean, in North America right now, we're weighed down by so much stuff. Stuff, 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 stuff. <laughs> My wife used to say to me, you got so much stuff. And I guess the truth is I do. And sometimes that stuff weighs it down. It keeps us from being able to run. We're dragging it all along behind us. Sometimes I feel like we're pushing a cart full of stuff up the hill. It doesn't matter to the Lord. We don't take it with us and we can't have it in glory. And we won't need it in glory. It's just stuff. But Paul is saying, don't let that stuff weigh you down. Run for God's glory. Get streamlined. Get healthy. Run the race that has been set before you. Keep your eyes focused on him. And as you will see, he is at the finishing line, ready to cheer you on. But not only that, there's a great crowd of witnesses who have gone before us. They're all cheering us on. They can't wait to see us. Those who have gone before us can't wait to see us. They also are at the finishing line saying, go Jim, go. You know, go Norm, go. <laughs> all you who are watching, go, go, go. Keep running, keep running, because they're all watching, and at the finishing line is Jesus Christ our Lord. But we need to sometimes strip down all those things that are like weights to us. And then he says, but also be careful of sin, because sin, what sin does is ensnares the runner in his race. It's like we're tied to a bunch of little things, and we can't run the race very well because we are ensnared by these things. If you were a hunter, you would know what snares are all about. The idea is to catch an animal. And eventually they fight so hard to try to get out, they actually kill themselves. And we do not want to be ensnared with sin. We want to ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins and to wash us and cleanse us. We don't want to get ensnared with the sins. And that's why it's so important to be careful that you don't get into little sins. I have found people, as I watch Christians as they grow older, they start getting back into little things and they say, well, I'm a strong Christian. It won't help, help hurt me. And they get into this and they get into that, not realizing that those little things that they think that they're strong enough to overcome and that they're strong enough to be able to get away from and if they need to, they don't realize that those little things will snare them again. I'm amazed at how many people aren't going to church anymore. I'm amazed at how many people aren't fellowshipping anymore in churches. That I've known for years. Why? Because they've gotten snared in some little thought, some little talk, some little thing that was said. They've gotten snared in some little habit or whatever it is. So now instead of being able to run with freedom and joy, they run with weights and they run with snares around about them. But Paul goes on to says, what you need to do is get rid of those two things. And then on top of that, then run your race with endurance. That idea, as we said last night, is to run your race with patience. Don't worry about getting there in the first two minutes, but run it with endurance. Keep enough energy, enough strength that you can keep jogging on. You can keep going forward. God doesn't want us to burn out in our race. He wants us to last a long time. He wants us to keep going as a step and a step. You know, the longer we can keep healthy and keep running and keep enduring, the longer we can glorify Him. Amen? And He's given us to a race, but that race, we need to look at it in a way that we will do it in such a way of endurance so that we will have the patience to run it out. And I think sometimes we get impatient, as we said last night, where we need patience to be able to endure to be able to go step by step. I believe God wants us around for a long time. I don't think he's trying to get us just to burn out for his glory. I think he's trying to get us to the place to endure for his glory. To pace ourselves properly so that we're in our 50s and 60s and 70s. We're still able to preach and teach. We're still able to proclaim the word of God. We're still able to do the things that Christ has called us to do. Why? Because we did it with endurance with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. 
You know, we need to get up and join the race. That's the first important challenge that we face. We need to get up and join the race. Too many people have got out of the race. Too many people. Did you hear me? Too many people have got out of the race where they sit on the sidelines and they think it's okay. It's not okay. They got to get back in the race. And so that they can receive the prize if we are just willing to run for Christ Jesus. All will receive, but we need to get back into the race. You know, our discipleship principles are that Paul warns the disciple that they are in a spiritual race and they need to pace themselves and not get tangled up with the things of this world, making sure that they are able to complete the race that has been set before them. I think we need to look down the road every day and see where the finish line is and then pace ourselves and continue to run. And I know the Holy Spirit will give us strength each day as we go down. That's why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I've told you night after night, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be praying that the Holy Spirit will fill us. Why? So we can endure the race for Christ's honor and glory. When we don't get filled with the Holy Spirit, we can't run. If we don't eat proper spiritual food, and if we don't eat, drink proper spiritual water, as you would say from the Lord, we will not be able to endure the race. So as disciples, we are to keep our eyes focused on Jesus Christ. He is the finish line. He is waiting for us and cheering us on through the competition. Amen? Amen? He's cheering us on. As I said, go, Jim, go. You know, go, go. Keep running, keep running. Don't give up. Keep going. Oh, the disciple is giving so much time. And, it's, and we're not being wise. Because what we need to be wise in is to run the race for God's glory. You know, Christ himself ran the race. And he's helping us now to see how we can run the race also. Which he, ha which he has put before us. Right? Did you understand that? The race that we're in is not a race that we have fallen into accidentally. He knew us from when we were born, and He knows when we're going to be with Him in the present. And He has put the race before us. Now, don't get ensnared, don't get entangled, but run with endurance. Because He has put it before us. Why? Because He, all, he wants us all to receive the crown of righteousness, which comes from Him. Won't that be a wonderful, wonderful day? When we all gathered around, when I see all of you who are watching tonight, and I can see your names coming up on the screen, I love you, thank you for joining us. But isn't that going to be a wonderful day when we can gather around with our loved ones, we can gather around with our Lord Jesus Christ, and we got our crowns of righteousness on, and we're rejoicing and praising Him because we ran the race with endurance, and because we ran it with endurance, we got rid of sin so that we weren't ensnared. And we got rid of the weights that would hold us down. And we were able to cross over the finish line for God's glory. Amen. Doesn't that excite you? It excites me. So I just thank God for what lays ahead for us. So we need to remember that we are in a race. So let's get running for Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's get running for Christ Jesus. You know, maybe all you can do is walk. You can jog. Maybe you're a full-fledged marathon or whatever. But just get involved. And I know as you get involved, God will be glorified. And He's waiting for you at the finish line. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for this opportunity to talk about, again, this discipleship empowerment tip, O oh God, that You have called us to be part of a race. A race, O oh God, that you will give us the strength to run, that you will give us the fire and the anointing to get in, to be able to run, that you have laid up a crown of righteousness for us, Lord. And I pray tonight, I pray for each one of us, Lord, that those weights that are holding us down, Lord, we give them to you. We, we, we say, okay, Lord, point them out and we'll get rid of them. Lord, those sins that are ensnaring us, O oh God, I ask for forgiveness. Break those snares, break those cords and those ropes, O oh God, so that they don't pull us down into destruction and death. 
And Lord, I pray right now that you will, by your Holy Spirit, give us the anointing to be able to endure so that we can not only see those who are witnesses at the end, but most of all, we will see you face to face with all your glory, ready to receive a wonderful crown of righteousness. And we give you thanks now in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Just one little note. Tonight was our number 50 devotional. And God has helped us to run this race. And we're looking forward to running another 50 more if God gives us the strength. But we're praying for endurance. Endurance to do it one step at a time for His glory. So thank you again for joining us. We love you. And I know that Jesus Christ loves you. And I know he's going to continue to empower you so that you can endure for his glory. Amen. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.